You know what time it is? It's time to get in the game with your host, Sintan J. What's up, everybody? Satara J here, the favorite host of your favorite sports show, Get in the Game. And listen, we are excited here at Get in the Game live at 904 Live Studios here in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, because this is our first ever pre-draft special. And I am honored to be joined on set here today with the incomparable men sitting to my left and my right. And one thing we do here at Get in the Game, if you haven't noticed, is we love bringing on experts and so these men here on set with me they are experts in the game of football and so we thought it would be nice to bring you something a little bit more different than you know espn and the nfl <laughs> they got nothing on getting the game tonight okay so let's introduce our guys to my left you guys know him as terry mcgriff he has a show here on wednesday evenings the terry mcgriff show he is the founder of the women's tackle football league and the owner of the team here in jackson the Pumas thanks for joining us this thanks evening guys he is a statistician okay so he's gonna blow your mind this evening <laughs> it'll be cool to kind of go back and forth with him he's already got his laptop pulled Ready up to and to my right is the incomparable because you guys love him here in Jacksonville because of the state championships he has brought to the reigns high school so all my rebound people chill out okay for the next <laughs> hour or so all right and give the much respect that is due to coach duran wiley yes. thank you for joining us this thanks evening. for having me in Thank you so much. Okay, and don't forget, guys, they, they already had their pregame meal, but we are sponsored by My Season Chicken and Ribs. So if you get hungry while we're talking about the show, run on down to Lim Turner and Dunn right next to Harold's Meat Market and go see <coughs> Alvin Brooks. He'll hook you up with some really good. You ate before. I did. I'm full. He's full. <laughs> but he's not going to fall asleep. He has football-itis this evening. He's going to be wide awake. And, guys, let's start with the news that kind of hit our cell phones in it, the NFL world in kind of a conundrum because this was not, at least I wasn't expecting it. My producer, Mr. Petty, kind of thought that if Rob Gronkowski was going to come out of retirement, why not for the Tampa Bay Bucks? Coach Wilder, we'll start with you. What was your initial reaction on that news? Well, I wasn't as shocked as I'm sure everybody was, but because the guy's still young. And then mm -hmm. his, his quarterback and Tom Brady called him and asked him to uh, – um, to, to, to think about it and join them, yeah. it, it seems like so. They, they uh, seem like they're going to hook up again and they win it again. Yeah, and, and listen, I guess if you're going to go somewhere, why not go to South Florida? Because it's totally different from playing in Foxborough Fox, and totally different from playing with Bill Belichick. Do you think that Rob Gronkowski is going to fit in this system with Bruce Arians as the head coach this time around? Yes, I do. I think he is going to be the same free spirit and coach Arians usually lets guys be who they are mm -hmm. kind of worked a little bit to his detriment with with the James Winston situation because ah. he likes to let people be who they are mm -hmm. and thrive and by being themselves and I think it kind of backfired because he didn't get the the learning that and development from James that he was hoping to get that's why they are with yeah the goat right now yeah sounds good to me okay guys let me tell you guys what's going to happen this evening so you can kind of follow along we're going to kind of talk about the first round and all the teams that have picks because a couple teams don't because they traded away their picks um the top team in the draft that has the most picks is the miami dolphins so we'll kind of talk about what we think they're going to do but of course this evening we're going to focus on our hometown team because there's so much going on <laughs> with the jags as of Five hours ago. I don't know if that Twitter war is still going on like <laughs> Terry was talking about at the beginning of the show. Coach, do you think that we'll see Leonard Fournette move during the course of the draft starting on Thursday? Well, I think it's still up in the air. I think um, they want to first see what they can po possibly get for him mm -hmm. in return. But I think, I don't know, I've been 50-50 back and forth with yeah. it, him staying and him going. But because uh, he's still young yeah. and productive. So I think they'll, they, they, I, if I had to make a decision I think he'll stay yeah if he goes what is he worth where the running back market is right now they'll be lucky if they get anything uh, higher than a fourth round pick for him that's wow. probably about the going rate right now wow but because of the fact that nobody wants to pay running back and he's getting coming up on some money 
and um, it's all going to deal with salary cap. And you look at all the running backs that have been released and moved since this yeah. offseason. Yeah. It's going to be where there's going to be cost effective. And they want to get something that they feel like decent compensation for. Them. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if tomorrow something pops up on our news feed that says that Jacksonville has now been awarded another pick just because they've been doing so <laughs> much training in the last couple of days. Now, Coach, you've got two kids that are – uh, draft prospects. Right. Um, so talk about Solomon and Mike, who you coached and are looking to take their football talent to the next level. Well, I'll start off with Solomon, uh, the big guard from Georgia. I think okay. he is going to, uh, um, like I said, like I'm in third or fourth round here. That's what I'm hearing. And uh, that will be great for him. And, mm -hmm. and if he goes higher, hey, that, that's awesome too. But uh, Solomon is a, is a young man who I'm looking forward to seeing play in the NFL. Yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a big, strong guy. I, I always said I thought he was going to play 10 years in the league because he's a sturdy guy, a guy mm -hmm. that's very durable, and I think he's going to do well. And then speaking of Mike Pinckney, you know, Mike brings so much to the table as far as um, a linebacker. He's very intelligent out there on the field. He, he, he just understands the game, very instinctive. So I, I look forward to him and, um, you know, getting drafted as well. So I'm excited for the both of the guys. Awesome. Sounds good. All right, so let's go through the first round draft order, and you guys can stop me at any point. Any team that might stick out to you and where where we think they're going to pick, and you guys in TV land need to pay attention because if you've been following me on social media, starting tonight, we have a contest going on here mm. on Get In The Game where one lucky winner will win a gift card and a coupon to our sponsor to get a free meal if they're able to guess eight out of Jacksonville's 12 picks. So we're looking for these guys to say, all right, with that ninth pick, I think Jacksonville's going to pick a wide receiver. So you guys want to pay attention because with these two guys sitting to my left and right, they might kind of clue you in on who Jacksonville's going to pick. All right, so first pick, of course, we know Cincinnati Bengals. Is Joe Burrow coming off the board or is it going to be Chase? What do you guys think? The safe pick is going to be Joe Burrow. Okay. He's, he's going to be your franchise quarterback. He's going to, first thing, he's going to sell tickets. He's a local kid. Okay. After his Heisman Trophy speech, everybody's in love with him. Yeah. He's, he's made the whole state, you know, fall in love with him. It's going to be great for that city for him to be there. What do you think, Coach? Think Chase gonna, or Joe? Uh, it's going to be Joey. I think he's done, his body of work speaks for itself. Yeah. He's done what he's needed to do. Um, his coach and Joe Brady, the one, the offensive coordinator who's an NFL guy, has gave him great tutelage, so I look for him to be number one pick. Yeah, so Joe Burrow's a kid in his final season that threw for over 5,000 yards with a completion rate of 76.3. Now, here's the thing that some people don't understand. That may not transfer to 76% at the next level. When you've got linebackers oh, no. who are skilled at flying around the field, cornerbacks who can pass, deflect the whole game, do you think he's going to translate well at the next level? Well, I think that's going to that's going to determine it's going to be determined by him, you know, because as he spoke to um, Peyton Manning a couple of days ago mm -hmm. about you know patience, yeah, understanding during your during your rough times, what are you learning? Yeah, how you develop it. It's going to be very important because the game is going to be different on the next level. Yeah, for sure. If, if you're going to talk to anybody before the draft, I guess you would talk to Peyton Manning, mm -hmm. right? All right, so next pick, Redskins. Who do you guys see them taking? I got. A little monkey wrench in there. Okay. I believe because of the head coaching liking defensive backs, I think they're not going to go Chase Young. They're already kind of set up on that defensive front. I think they're going to go Jeff Oku. Did you just say that Chase is going to slide in this draft? Yes, I did. Is that what you're predicting? Yes, I did. What do you think, Coach? Well, I'm not too far from him. Okay. Um, I think the shakeup will be something different. Wow. I'm not sure. I'm not sure at the moment what what position, but it could be different. Yeah. And and, and it's simply because of of the new head coach. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess I think it's going to be a shake up there. Ron Rivera is definitely someone who who'll do a wild card pick. Next, you got the Lions. Um, who do you see? You see anybody going to Detroit at that third pick? Anybody special? I could see. I could see Chase Young going there. I could okay. see it being a swap there, and I could see them going completely different there. I also can see Isaiah Simmons going there because okay. of his versatility to play yes. so many different spots for them. Okay, and the fourth pick goes to the Giants. Now, we saw a whole lot happen in New York last season. Do you think they're going to go for a quarterback? 
To no. compete with Daniel, who do you think they'll? No, go they'll position? go. Def they'll go. They'll go defensively. Defense. Okay. Defense. They'll. 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 They'll make their pick on the defense side of the ball. Isaiah Simmons would be the logical um, choice and a, a guy who can change the game with his versatility. Okay. But they'll go defense. Okay. And then the Dolphins, Terry. They have pick number. They have three picks in the first round. So the Dolphins can do some damage starting at, they've got pick number five, then they also sit at pick number 18, and then lastly pick number 26. Where do you see them picking position-wise with those three picks? It depends on their panic level. Okay. If they're, if, they're, <laughs> if they're safe and secure at where they are and think they're not going to lose the quarterback that they want, okay. I think they'll take I think they're going to take Tua. Okay. Even after all this, I think that's who they've been targeting. Right. I think that's who they're going to be. I wouldn't be surprised if they went in another direction and traded down. I think if they don't pick Tua, they'll probably trade down because they know they can get their quarterback later. Okay. And we know that Tua has been someone on the rumor mill who they were hoping to bring in to go through the physical. And they really, you know, he kind of translate well in that offense. The thing about Tua is no knock against the kid. He's just on the shorter side. But he's been compared to Drew Brees and Russell Wilson. Do you think that's a good comparison for him, Coach? It is. Yeah. He is very, very good. Yeah. He's very good. Yeah. Yeah, he's very good. Very yeah. versatile, can move yeah. with the ball quick on his good. feet. His decision-making is excellent. Yeah. yeah. Just hope that they can, whoever have a good offensive line, mm -hmm. because we're <laughs> going to hope that that knee you know, stay sturdy enough throughout the course of his career. Okay, next we got the L.A. Chargers at pick number six. Where do you see them picking? This is the mystery for me of the draft. Okay. Mm. Because they have a lot of depth on everywhere. Yeah, they do. I would see if they're going to keep this spot, I would figure that they would probably do something and sure up their defensive line. I wouldn't be surprised if they take Derrick Brown or Kinlaw okay. at that spot because they're so solid on the ends. They could use some push up the middle, which will help those ends and also the linebacking court. Okay. And then we got the Panthers at seven pick, who we know just kind of parted way. Lyman, or do they lock up on wide receiver to make sure he has targets? Well, I, I believe they want to go offensive line. Okay. Uh, I, I think they'll get the best available. I think uh, the guy from Georgia, okay. or maybe the guy, the young man from Iowa. Mm -hmm. uh, but they got to, you know, secure the offensive line. They, they got to make sure they can pay, you know, block for that running back they just gave all that money to. Yeah, <laughs> Christian. McCaffrey. And listen, and if they can't, he'll make a hole for himself because we have seen Christian do that. And now with somebody like Teddy Bridgewater in front of him, uh, that offense is going to be electric. I think if if the coaching can kind of keep up with the pieces they have. So at the eighth pick, we got the Cardinals. Are they going to pick a wide receiver, knowing that Larry Fitzgerald might be gone after this year, or are they okay with having DeAndre and Larry? I think they're okay there. I think they're going to find a left tackle. Okay. I would pick somebody like he said, uh, Worse. Okay. Or I would, if it wasn't for the fact that you got that issue with the with the supposedly drug thing. Um, I would figure they would go to get Makai Beckton out of Louisville. Somebody's huge because right. he's so small. Yeah. That guy, could, he could cover him up in the way he likes to move around. And this guy being so athletic, him or Tristan Worth are probably the two more athletic tackles. So I draft. think that will be their place. So they'll show up them with their offense. Okay, and here goes the ninth pick. You guys be paying attention because they might give you some pointers right here to win this contest. The Jags are at ninth. Okay, they're sitting with two picks. They're at ninth, and uh, what's the other pick they got? The 20th. So what are they going to do with this pick? Are they going to trade it? Are they going to keep it? And if they keep it, who are they going after and why? I think they're going to keep it. Okay. And uh, everybody, you know, the receivers are so talented. But the one that I just keep watching, mm -hmm. I like the guy from LSU. Okay. The, Je the Jefferson kid. Yeah. I think he is the guy. Yeah. You know, Judy is the obvious choice, Florida guy. Right. Uh, now, nah, I wouldn't be mad. I'm saying I, don't be shocked if they went his route. Okay. You know, C.D. Lamb is also up there, so yep. it, they, they, they have a, a plethora of choices. And what do you think? I think they might go a little different route. I think if Derek Brown okay. or Ken Law is there, one of the, because they they, they they already kind of put a lot of work in on that defense mm -hmm. already, and that's where they probably have the biggest need. They did bring in some free agent defensive linemen, but if you get a person of, of J Derek Brown, somebody that can really dominate the middle of that, 
and then what they just invested in bringing the middle line back and then you just move you just moved uh, your, your, your best your middle line back, back to the weak side it'll probably make that defense almost as good as they was in 2017 which what they need so I think the quarterback that they're going to keep um, Minshew he'll be able to do his thing. They'll give him uh, more opportunities to come and help them win games now. Now, we'll talk about this later, but I'm kind of shocked that neither of you chose for them to shore up their offensive line because in the past couple years, that has been the issue, and that's one reason why Nick Foles got hurt. But I'll save that argument for later, all right? <laughs> so the Browns are sitting at the 10th pick. Who do you think they're going to pick, Coach? Uh, I think the Browns are the offensive lineman. Yeah, I think they really do. They need a lot. <laughs> yeah, you know they got they, they they have a lot of ingredients there, but they just they're missing some leadership. Yeah. But, but as far as draft picks, I I think they go back to from Louisville. Okay. So. And then the Jets are sitting at eleven. Terry, who you got them going for? They you they could use an offensive lineman for sure. But they also need help on defense. Here's why I think it's going to be a little bit different. I think they're going to go Kenneth Murray right here, the linebacker from Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Okay. The side to sideline guy that can be. Your middle, your your true leader, because they've had some issues yeah. with their safety. You know who's been talking. They they still they need a they need a more of somebody to stabilize them on that defense. And I think Murray will do that for them. He's been a three-year starter, nothing but a stud. I think he's going to be a good job and be a good fit right there. All right, and then we have the Vegas Raiders, which you know we have to remember to keep saying the <laughs> Vegas Raiders. They sit at pick number twelve and nineteen. Are they going to bring? Because the the rumor has kind of been that maybe they're going to try to pick up a quarterback, which I, I don't know why. Because you've got Derek Carr and the recent backup that they uh, Marcus Mariota, who said I'm a sure backup. What do you see them picking? The question is because they have this has been one of the quieter off seasons yeah. after the, some of the mm -hmm. stuff that Very they've quiet. been. You don't have a really <laughs> good gauge. They can go so many areas. I would say that they help the defense out. This is where I would see. Um, anything from a C.J. Henderson. I would also see them bringing in a safety. Mm -hmm. um, Grant Delpit from LSU, you know, because that'll help them on the defensive side. Their offense, you know, they, they've been pretty good on the offense where they've been losing like they lost to the Jaguars. It's, they couldn't stop anybody when right. they needed to. Yeah, you know? yeah. Do you agree, Coach, that the offseason has been quiet? Now, now, when, now when I look at the offseason being quiet, you know, um, Gruden came in and he made a lot of noise. From a coach's perspective, has he had to kind of quiet down, to kind of focus on the team and getting them what they need to, to make this season a whole lot more successful than last year? Well, Gruden is a guy who is going to do it his way. Yeah. He's going <laughs> to get the pieces and the parts that he likes. And I think I would start with quarterback. You know, the question is, does he have the guy in house that he likes? Mm. Someone that he can go ahead and draft and then he can, he can bring along to the speed that he, he likes. But I, I like the corner from um, Florida Gators. I think... Uh, he is a talented guy. I think he is um, you know, 1B in terms of talent level. Uh, we got Yabakuda, but then C.J. Henderson, I believe that's his name. He is very good. Very good, yeah. So the 49ers are sitting at pick number 13 and 31. Now, we know last year Jimmy Garoppolo mm. proved to be better than we, than we most people thought mm -hmm. that he was going to be. So are they going to get him some offensive linemen, some wide receivers? What do you think, Coach? Uh, I think that, well, they just made a, a, a trade mm -hmm. with um, one of their receivers. So I, I they may go receiver. Mm -hmm. And I like C.D. Lamb okay. to fill that void. I think he would be a great pickup for those guys. Okay. Like, I agree. I agree receiver would be a good there, even though they, they did a good job and they have some receivers on there. They are like, they're a running team, and they've had some injuries on the guys who can really stretch the field. If you look at the Super Bowl, most of their receivers were basically running backs. They didn't really stretch the field. Their best receiver was killer, their tight end. They need another right. guy who can really stretch that field for them, which will make everything else open up again for them. Yeah, and speaking of tight end, the Bucks they're sitting at 14. They already got their next tight end. <laughs> Where do you see them picking at with pick number 14? Who are they going after? The best available left tackle. Okay. The, whoever, who, okay. Who, yeah. they're, they're going to predict that investment of Tom Brady. Right. They're going to make sure he's, and with the fact that it's brought in Gronk, they could go with two tight ends, so which will give that young left tackle a little Somehow. bit of time to yeah. develop and some extra room so that that's the, the, that, that rush end will have to go out a little bit farther, maybe play the wide nine now. 
when they go that double tight end gives their, give him a little bit because Tom's going to get that ball out pretty fast. Yeah, he will. Yeah, yeah. Broncos sitting at 15. We know that they released Joe Flacco a couple months ago. Do they need to shore up the running back position, or what do you see them needing? Well, I think they may go in the secondary as well. Okay. Um, they, I believe they're that early. Mainly a corner. Yeah. yeah mainly a corner. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stay right you there. You want to stay <laughs> <laughs> All right, 16, we have the Falcons. And in my opinion, they did not produce like we thought they were going to last year. I, was, I, I feel mm. like they are still holding the curse of losing that Super Bowl to the Patriots. What can help turn this team around? They've got to pick strong in this first round. Who are they going to get? I'm seriously believing that they're trying to trade up. They want to trade up because they want to get one of those top defenders. And if you look at their division, what yeah. now with Gronk, what what the, what the what the um, Saints are continuing to do? Yeah. You know mm -hmm. they made the trade to get more speed at receiver. They need help on the back end. Mm -hmm. They got rid of Trufant. You know they've had mm -hmm. a whole bunch of injuries on defense. That I wouldn't be surprised if their first three to four picks of they this whole up. draft was going to defense. Wow. What do you think, Coach? Yeah, def defensive. I think is where they'll go. Um, they lost their running back. Yeah. Uh, so, but you know, it's first round, so they won't invest in one in the first round. Yeah. But they they'll make their their choices on, on in the secondary as well. Uh, try to find the best playmaker that's available that's on the on board. The board. Yes. Yeah. Or maybe like Terry said, go ahead and trade up. There might be a lot of trading going on. The cowgirls sit at seventeen. Y'all know I gotta trash talk them because I'm an Eagles fan, so I can't just be here and follow the Cowboys. But they're sitting at pick number seventeen. They've you know, change some things in the off season. Most notable, getting rid of that head coach. But what do they need? They could use a tight end, but there's no first round worthy tight end. Okay. So, don't be surprised to see them trade back. Don't be surprised to see them because they did lose. They did lose Byron Jones, their number right. their number one corner, right. to go after a corner or safety. Okay. You know, so I wouldn't be surprised that they try to do something to show up the secondary. You have um, a, a whole bunch of guys still sitting out there. You got McKinney, um, the safety from Alabama. You also got the other corner from Alabama. I can't remember his name right off the top of my head. But they're, they're going to go defensive back. And I really think if they don't trade out of that spot or trade up or down, they're going to go defensive back because they need the help there. Right. Okay. Coach, I'm going to throw it to you on pick number 21. I'm going to give you my team, okay? Because people, they, they know, you know, how I feel about my Eagles. But from a coaching perspective, all right, I need Doug Peterson to shift some gears here, all right? We, we lost a lot of people, and free, we've got some undrafted free agents out there. Who are we going after with that 21st pick? Well, when you think about the Eagles, <laughs> uh, you know, they're, they're so defensive-minded. Yeah. But uh, the receiving core is pretty solid. Okay. Uh, they may go defensive line. Okay. Okay. Um, I think the, the, the one guy from Oklahoma, Big D tackle from Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. I think he would fit because um, they, they, you know, they look for those sturdy guys. Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Brian Dawkins being uh, a friend of mine. You know, they look for guys in that nature there to be very uh, grimy out there. So yeah. I think they're going d d d um, d defense this, this is draft in the first round. Do you agree, or do they need to go get a receiver? Because D Jack is coming back, and we're praying that he's healthy. Alshon Jeffries, you know. Is he going to be okay this year? Glad we got rid of Nelson Aguilar. No offense to him. He found a home. But where do yeah, you see us picking? Yeah, they got a white side to take his spot. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wouldn't be surprised for defense. But I'm thinking you probably want to sure up that spot because of the fact that you did have so many injuries there. Those guys are getting older. Whiteside didn't be what you want. And you would love to have somebody speed. So this is where I would see the little twist where they go back and get like Ruggs, Henry Ruggs, somebody with okay. the fastest guy probably yes, in the combine he was. to stretch that. And that would wow. also light a fire under those older Woo. receivers to get it, you know. I, li I like his pick <laughs> over yours, Coach. I thought you were going to give me some. I get fired up when I talk. We need some good wide receivers. Yeah. I need Carson Wentz to have some sure win targets. We know D. Jack is going to do his his deal. But if we can get another one and maybe run a three-receiver split, 
It, well, it's going be to it's gonna yeah. be hard to run with my Eagles. Okay, <laughs> but let's move on because y'all know how passionate I am about them. All right, at pick number 22, we got the Vikings, and they also sit at 25. So two close picks. Where do you see Minnesota going? They won't receive her. Okay. Um, they just lost. They're the number one guy. Yeah, Diggs. Uh, Diggs. So uh, they're gonna they're gonna find one of those six seven guys that 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 you can pick from and, and not miss a beat. Yeah. They're gonna go, they're gonna go receive in the first round. You agree? I agree with them. I, I receive receiver or they're gonna go defensive back because they lost them. They lost them. Right. Quite, quite a, they've get you know because of salary cap reasons. They had to replenish, and plus, a couple of their draft courses on the defensive end. I mean, defensive backs haven't panned out the way they wanted to. Right. So they're going to go that, and I think I think receiver is going to be the, the the pick of choice because it's going to be some guys in the in, that you can come back later in the draft and get and to help get. you on defense. Yeah, and the good thing for them, I mean, they literally pick. 22 then 25 so i think they'll go with best on the board mm -hmm. at either position and right. then come back and, and get, get, the, get who's left guy. on the next right. position right so patriots who we just saw they picked up another pick in the fourth round but in their first round they have the 23rd pick who's bill belichick going after coach uh receiver okay they have to get a receiver uh the guy from Arizona State. Okay. I yes. think he'll be a great fit. Great fit. Explosive. Yeah. Uh, can move the chains. Yeah. I think they're going to go there. I think that's one of Tom Brady's, uh, that was his thing this year. They, he had no guy that can stretch the field. Yeah. And uh, it, it really just aggravated him a lot. Yeah. You know. So the Patriots will make up for what they didn't give Tom now that he's gone. You agree with that? Yeah, I do. I, agree, I do agree with receiver. And if that's the guy, that'd be something he prepared the two teammates. He got the other receiver from Arizona State the year before. I think they're going to they're going to find out and get Stidham or whoever else they bring in. Don't be surprised if Cam Newton's up in there. I wouldn't be surprised. No. I, I'm, I'm just going to pull it out there. I wouldn't be surprised because if there's an organization where you're going to come in and just do what you're told and fit the role, I wouldn't be surprised. At that. I know people like that way that doesn't seem like an odd fit, but Does if you it? look at Belichick, he allows people to be who they are as long as they perform. And that wouldn't be that would. And then if you give that, give him a weapon to go with that. The fact that he doesn't need the offensive line protection. Well, he probably now that he's got these injuries. Right. But he's uh, still a lot more mobile, mobile than yeah. Brady right, is. Right, right. And they did already bring in some offensive linemen later in the draft. You get another receiver there. You bring Cam in. I think you'll be potent. And the, he wants to show it wasn't about Tom. Ah, okay, got it. All right. So next pick, we got the Saints sitting at twenty-four. Are they going to go offensive linemen, or do they need to shore up their defense with that 24th pick? Ooh, I'm going to give you a curveball. Okay. Kicker. No. <laughs> this is where, if you looked at when the, the, a couple of years ago, the Saints were truly potent. They were great. They had a one-two punch at the running back position. Yeah, This is true. where you probably see, out of the blue, DeAndre Swift come off the board. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Or, um, or, I can't think of his name, the running back from Wisconsin. Okay. They somebody who could be the yin and yang backfield you can go right. back to because they're most potent running the ball right. not passing it everybody knows what drew Brees can do when they can run at will like they were before they were the super bowl favorite and with what you got coming in that division you better be able to run the ball so jonathan taylor or swift that'd be more of a bell cow back I agree. Uh, they need help at receiver, but they got a, they got the guy from Denver yeah. to come on over. So they won't drop a receiver in the first round. They'll come back in, in the later round and, and get a get a young receiver. But uh, running back and, and defense, you know, because again, you know, I think with Drew Brees, they're going to score points. Yes. Uh, yeah. No they, doubt. They just need to stop somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pick number 27, Seahawks. We saw them make some pretty interesting mm. offseason moves, but they have lost some defensive pieces. So do you think they kind of try to protect Russell in the front, or do they get some defensive-minded guys that can help stop opponents? This is where I like A.J. Espinosa. He's, a, he's, he's, he's that typical – do it all in. He's going to be good against the run, and he's going to give you a decent pass rush. And it, they're, they're, really, they're, they, they, they're not great in the secondary, but that scheme allows them to be. And if you can get that pass rush where they, you, they like to shut down the run so they can make sure that you got a pass, 
I think he's going to be a good. They're going to, and then that gives them a little bit more leverage when they try. If they're going to try to bring back Clown. Ravens are at twenty eighth pick. Mm. Give me a coach's uh. mindset. John Harbaugh didn't go for the chip like they thought they would. What are they going to do? Great question. <laughs> for Lamar, I think you know. Wow. I believe they took a receiver first round last year. Okay. So they won't go back there. This will be a, de a defensive pick. Okay. They'll they'll start the defense. They uh they got to get a guy. Uh, they got to get another defensive end, another another linebacker type. They had some injuries last year, so I think they'll go in the front seven. They'll pick from the D line to the linebackers in this draft here. I think that'll be their first round pick. Yeah, okay. and we know the Titans sitting at 29th. We know they don't need a running back. Mm -hmm. What do you see the Tennessee Titans doing with their 29th pick? Uh, They'll get more explosive on the perimeter. They'll, okay. they'll, they'll look at receiver for first, I believe, and uh, because their second, their defense is pretty good. Yeah. They'll, they'll, go, they'll, they'll go tight in offensive line. Okay. All right. Yes. And then Packers sitting at 30th. Do they, sh you know, bring in a quarterback maybe? I would normally would have said mm -hmm. this would to be the guy this is where you would bring in your your up and coming quarterback mm -hmm. but since i think they think that they're close okay and with the nfc south is kind of going to be beating beating each other up the nfc west is going to be beating each other up and they only they're really the only team they're going to be they'll be worrying about the, they'll be worrying about probably the bears right this is where i think they're going to help shore up the offensive line okay and if the, who's the best available offensive line this is actually where I think they'll probably go in. They appear to be, if they're going to be anybody to pick a guard or a center, they'll probably be the team to do it. Okay. And last pick, Super Bowl champion. Mm. Shout out to Angie Ree. Y'all know I love him. Wish he would come back to Philly, but it's okay. Where do you see them picking at 32? Uh, I see those guys going to the uh, defensive front as well. Okay. The, the offense is solid, very explosive. Yeah. They have what they need. Yeah. Uh, it, it'll be on defense to uh, show up the front seven again, uh, and they may look secondary. I, you know, when you when you draft late in the first round, you're looking for the best available guy by position. So they'll they'll be smart and make the great choice. Yeah. So let's talk about some of these top prospects in the draft. We already hit on Chase Young. I mean, you can't talk enough about that kid. We know where we think Joe Burrow is going. Talked about Tua. We've got the junior um, old lineman, Jedrick Wills. Do you guys think he'll be the first offensive lineman to come off the draft? Because there's not a lot of them in this draft no, that, that are seen as good. So no. will we see a couple offensive linemen come in the first round? He's been the name a lot of people talked about, but I think Tristan Wirfs is the guy okay. that'll probably okay. be the first one because of the fact that he can play left and right. Wills is normally mostly been your right um, tackle. I haven't really seen a project him being on the left side. So he's not a guy that you can put over here and then, okay, when that older guy that we got, we can move mm -hmm. him over. So I think you're going to have Wills, Thomas, one of those guys before him. And I think if it wasn't for the fact that people might be having their red flags trying to find out what was going on with the kid from Louisville, he might have been because you call human being nature. There's not too many human beings that size and that kind of skill walking around on the face of the earth at six, seven and almost 400 pounds. You know, he's a couple of burgers of being yeah. 400 pounds. <laughs> and he ran so fast. And he's great against when you got a guy that tall, they're usually not great pass blockers. And he can pass protect as well as run block. If he can keep it together, he can keep his weight under control, he might be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, you know? wow, yeah. wow. That's he's, a, he's that's good. a strong yeah. prediction there. Yeah. Now, when you look at C.J. Henderson, he, he may not be one of the top wide receivers. In, he is one of the top, I'm sorry, wide receivers in draft, but maybe not the first to go. But he is one of the fastest. He ran a 4-3-9-40. But from a coaching perspective, we know that doesn't necessarily translate into the real game of football because no one's always running in a straight line. Mm -hmm. But where do you see him going? Well, you you see him going the first round? Well, you said C.J. Henderson, you're talking about the defensive back. I'm sorry, yes, yeah. the cornerback. I'm sorry, the cornerback, yes. He will, in my opinion, I think he is the most talented DB in the in the draft at corner. I think he is this. I watched him in high school, um, and then the things he did at Florida. I mean, he has it all. Yeah. He's, he's long. He can run. Very very athletic. Have great ball skills. This young man, I I, I think he is a sure first rounder. 
uh, the question is just how high he will go. He will go. Now let's talk about these other quarterbacks because everyone's making ways about Joe Burrow and Tua. We still got Jalen Hurts there, but he has – We've kind of seen his drags, draft stock plummet a little bit because he's been sitting behind Jordan Love and Jacob Eason. How do you see those guys going in this draft? Are they going to drop to the two, mm. to the second and third round? I, I think it all depends on what the runs in the draft. If there's going to be a big run on offensive linemen, which I really predict that there will be, and receiver, I think that he will drop, not because of he, he, he's not qualified to be a first-round pick, I think the need for him and what's how the draft flows will predict whether he gets into the first. I don't see him being in the top of the first round or even in the middle unless there's a team already just rated him already like number one on their board already. This is the guy we're going with. I don't care who else is on the board. Like if you fall in love with him like 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 the Kansas City, they came up to get Mahomes because that was their guy right. and they was happy that he fell to them. I I think that you're speaking to Jalen Hurts. Yeah, Jalen yeah. Hurts. I think Jalen Hurts is going to go in the second round. It's not going to be a knock on him. I think it, he's a guy that just get me in just get me in the building and you'll see what happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been a winner since he was in diapers. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, he's not a guy, and if you can see how he handled himself at Alabama, he's not a guy that, that shies away from competition. The way he lost his job was a coaching decision. It wasn't a performance decision. You know what I mean? They – Georgia at that day had his number. Everybody has that day. And then the other guy was just ready to take over. And he was the flavor of the month, so he kept the job. I don't think he necessarily beat Jalen Hurts out because Jalen Hurts actually bailed him out and bailed them out of a game. Yeah. And the way he handled himself, you can't do anything but say, this is the type of guy that I would love to have as my franchise quarterback, whether he's the second, third round. And as you can see, your round doesn't matter. If you can play, you can play. And if you can play, you're going to stay. Right. Yeah. So will Jalen Hurts come off of the board before Jordan Love out of Utah or Jacob Eason out of Washington? Well, I think Jordan Love will be in the first round. Okay. I think um, those guys battling for that spot out of the first round will be Eason and Jalen Hurts. I think and from from Georgia. I know you like Georgia. Right. I, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I like from too. I think, uh, but when it comes to Jalen Hurts, I think the team that takes him – it will be a team, it will be a you know, calculated strategic choice. The teams are going to take it. There, there won't be a team that, you'll, that takes Jalen Hurts that you'll be like, that was different. No, the team that takes him is going to be, you're going to see why they take, they, they, they're taking him. You're going to see how he will fit right in. You know, you, you hear about the Pittsburgh Steelers. You, you, you hear about the Cowboys coming to get him. Because remember, Dak Prescott was, was found in the fourth round, I believe. Right. So, again, Jalen Hurts is the same guy. So, you better believe the team that takes him is going to have a specific plan for him to succeed mm -hmm. long term. I think I think he's going to be fine. Now, now, Coach brought up something interesting here by saying the Steelers, and I think that would be a very interesting fit. I think he would gel very well with a Mike Tomlin as a head coach. Is that something you could foresee too, Yeah, Terry? I can see him with the Steelers. I can <clears throat> see at least four other teams because – he has the demeanor that he, he won't be a bad locker room person if right. he's sitting. Right. And if he goes to a Steelers, if he goes to a Green Bay, he will be the guy that will be okay with sitting a year or two and might push it like, like my Helms did to say, hey, man, look what this guy's doing. we right. got to figure out a way to yeah. get him on. He's cheaper. He's younger. Yeah. <laughs> we can trust him with the keys to our organization. Yeah. Okay, we can get something for this guy. Now let's get him out of here get him in and then we got our Patrick Mahomes that nobody was expecting. Yeah, that's a good point. Now listen, as you guys are paying attention to how we're discussing, don't forget that after the show goes up tonight, you guys are going to have a chance to win a contest here on Get in the Game. We are leaving it up to you to decide out of the Jaguars 12 picks. We need you to get eight of them correct. The first person to eight will win our contest. So make sure after we post this show tonight, you head on over there under the comments and let us know who you think the Jaguars are going to pick out of those 12 picks. You need to get eight of them correctly. Remember, you're only picking the position. We don't expect you to be like a Mel Kuyper and say they're going to choose this person. As long as you get the position correct, you'll be entered into win. Now let's talk about the running backs because this is not a draft like we've seen in the past where the run running back position is, you know, the, 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 the possible guys going in are like cream of the crop type guys. I mean, you've only got a handful of them. When you look at DeAndre Swift, J.K. Dobbins, Jonathan Taylor, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, Cam Akers, 
Where do you see those guys going? Who's going first? And how do they kind of fall as the draft goes on? Will we see a lot of these kids be taken on Friday and maybe even go as late as Saturday in the fourth round? That's an absolute yes. Okay. The running back position has been devalued wow. because Amazing. of if you look at some of these guys who've gotten paid and once they got paid, the workload just their the workload started to take uh, take toll on them, and then you become a getting diminished uh, product for the money. Not that they're not good talent; it's just running back. You can find those guys. The Forty Niners number one proof of yeah, most of it broke their record, and he was an undrafted free agent. Right. The, the talent level, because that's one of the positions that you can just it's an instinct position yeah you know what i mean though if you got it or you don't at that mm -hmm. spot you know what i mean and you can put a guy in there and he, he depending on the offense that's a good fit for him he would be he's gonna he can give you two or three good years of production and then you can go find the guy look at the, just look at the last this off season how the movement at the running back was guys you know their names by heart and you're like well why they moved to this guy because the production didn't fit the salary yeah. When you look at Jonathan Taylor, he was the fastest running back in the draft this year. He ran a 4.39. And all three of his seasons, he's rushed for over 1,900 yards. This kid has proven to be able to handle that workload. Do you think he'll be around in the second round? Do you, do no. you see him going as high up as DeAndre <clears throat> Swift, maybe? He could very well sneak in the first round. He has that okay. kind of talent, that wow. kind of production. Now, Willie, um, we have to wait and see. But I think um, he is by far... Um, one of the more talented, doable backs in the draft. Mm -hmm. And when you name the other guys, you know, J.K. Dobbins and Cam Akers, that's a lot of value. Yeah. Those are some very talented guys. Yeah. So whoever gets those guys in the second, third, fourth round, going to get some it. value. Yeah. You know, uh, they don't waste them in the first round. But I tell you what, you just named some very, very, very talented mm -hmm. backs that can, you know, help the team offensively and on special teams. Now, one thing I noticed about these running backs, and not because I'm six feet, you know, 72 inches standing tall, but <laughs> most of these kids are 5'8", five, 5'9", five, and you don't really see a lot of teams now that are kind of appreciating that smaller back just because of how physical the game is and how sturdy those defensive lines have you know, been in the past couple of years. Is that going to hurt some of these guys? Like Clyde Edwards Hilaire, he's 5'8", so he's small. You can call him ping ball, but he's not an Alvin Kamara. Oh, he's not. He's short in stature, but, you know, you're talking about a powerful guy. You know, okay. I, I think, again, that the running back has now has been done by committee, and, uh, you know, when it comes to the, the height and all that, I don't think they're, you know, they're no more six-foot back six yeah. <laughs> one they don't come a dime a dozen and when they do they're off the board quick yeah uh but these guys who you name again you you see how fast and powerful they are and then more important that productive yeah uh you, you know you still say hey we can find some value late in the rounds yeah now i'm drawing a blank but when you said small there aren't big backs anywhere i'm thinking about the guy from the giants uh david meggett no. Joe morris he was uh, a big, big running back, about 6'3", to about 260 pounds. This was oh, Jacobs. Oh, Brandon Jacobs. Brandon Jacobs. Jacobs. We don't see Brandon Jacobs anymore. Oh. And so, at, to your point, the the quality back and the, the need of a back is not really there anymore. Well, I won't say it's the need. It's the availability. There's tons of backs. You just look at what's available in... You just went off a whole bunch of names that are good backs. There's you could go like Le, uh, Michael Piron, a great, really productive back, mm -hmm. but he's going to be down the list because he doesn't have that one thing that makes him stick out and say we got to have this guy. You, his comparable guy is still in the draft. He might be a fifth, sixth round pick that'll make a team and actually be a contributor. You're going to have some undrafted guys that you haven't heard of make some rosters yeah, and going to be contributors. True. If not, start, depending on the situation. All it takes is an injury or two, and next thing you know, you're rushing for 150 yards in the game, and then <coughs> people in fantasy football are like, who is this guy? Right. You know <laughs> right. what I mean? Yeah, and, and that'll make it interesting to see what happens with guys like Deontay Freeman. And, I'm sorry, Devontae Freeman and, right. and Shady McCoy, who are still out there waiting to get picked Frank up. Frank Gore is still out there. The, you're right, but we know their issue at that case is you're going to have to pay those guys. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to give that much money right. to these running backs anymore. All right, let's let's delve into the Jaguars' picks, okay? So they've got 
The Knights in the 20th of the first round, which we've already went over. Second round, they've got the 10th pick, okay, which is 42 overall. Third round, 73rd. So on the first and second day, they've only technically got four picks. So where do you guys see them going with those top four picks? So first round, ninth pick and 20th. Second round, 42 overall. Third round, 73. Who are they going for mm. those four, with those four picks? Well, well, I, well, I was... and will, and I'm sorry, before you get started, and will we see a Fournette or Yannick Ngakwe trade in one of those four picks? I think there's going to be fire works on on draft day with the yeah. jaguars i yeah. think it's going to be so much movement mm -hmm. i think you know it's quiet before the storm i think on draft day on thursday you're going to get so much movement because as you see calias campbell is gone and yeah. you know uh mcguapi wants out yeah um they traded with one of the defensive backs is gone so there's a when you say who the jaguars are going to pick is that the boy i tell you what it's they need everything if you, if, you, if you think about it yeah but they just have to make great choices we need production yeah the job walking a lot of production they yeah. need guys to come in and going to produce so that they can get back to you know to winning just yeah. simple as simple as that yeah. Now, Terry, you and I have had a couple conversations about this. And my opinion, coach of the Jags, is they need that big name quarterback. Now, in my opinion, they should be going after Cam Newton. But if they don't, will they try to make a run for a Jalen Hurts or try to get someone to compete with Gardner Minshew? Because in my opinion, he's not your answer over the long run. And he's not, I mean, yeah, we know the city kind of fell in love with the mustache and fell in love with the kid that just is ordinary, wears board shorts, has his tank top on, chest hair, loves to hang out at Jacksonville Beach. But he, can he sell tickets? you know four years from now what's your opinion of that Here, here's what I know one thing I do know is they love the kid the kid was one of the highest wonder lick scores even though I don't really give a lot of credence in that yeah but at the quarterback position when the higher the wonder lick and he's got one of the highest ones in there if you mm -hmm. look at what happened last year in camp they didn't bring in a veteran because they loved this kid so much and the way he was able to pick up the offense and learn and the production when he came in, he didn't freeze. Did he make mistakes? Yes. But when you got a guy that gave you that type of production, then you didn't expect it, and he's cheap. You give him every opportunity to, can't, to succeed. Yes, you bring in something to give you some safety on the back end just in case, which they could bring in Andy Dalton because he, he has, he has um, his former head, his former offensive coordinator here. You could bring in a veteran. You could even bring in Winston. There's tons of guys you can bring in. And you could also bring in Jalen Hurts to give him competition. Mm -hmm. But I think you're going to give him the chance to be the guy because of the fact of all we said everything before. The marking, he's marketable. The fact that he's actually extremely smart, but he's also that guy that's marketed as the, the good old boy that anybody can approach. When you need these other... You know, you, you're trying to change the culture in the locker room from what the old regime to these guys. You want you want some people in there that you know, if I bring this guy in there, there ain't going to be no issues with him, and we're going to be able to move forward. Because I think the, the owner has given these guys the clean bill of health. I don't think this is going to be their one year, and then if you don't win, they're gone. I think the, what the moves that they were allowed to make this offseason says to me that he's going to give them a chance to rebuild this thing. Is he going to give Doug another year after this if they don't go if they don't split this 50 50. well obviously i think what's going to happen is is it's going to be on the look the okay. vibe see you know it's not so much about you know he's not looking for him to go undefeated but to you know are we competitive are we competitive and i think that's what he's looking for the atmosphere the, you know so I, I think the Jaguars have a lot of questions to be to be answered, and uh, I think that uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in terms of how they look. Yeah, yeah. You know, just want to see way 
at least. They need to get some swagger, okay? That's basically <laughs> what Coach is saying. He's not going to say it, but I'll say it. Jaguar, Shot Con, Doug, y'all need to get some swagger. Because according to Coach to my right and Terry to my left and me, you don't have no swagger. And what you need in this league is swagger. And could they, I mean, Terry brought up a good point. Could we see them bringing a Jameis Winston or an Andy Dalton or a Joe Flacco? I don't know why they wouldn't go for Cam. I mean, that's that would just be my pick. I don't know if they want to pay him, but could they bring in somebody to kind of mix it up a little bit and bring the swagger? I think they should. I think we we need some excitement. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that some bravado in here. So yeah. I think they could make a move like that. But it's, like I said, I think Thursday. It's going to be very exciting for the Jaguars. I think yeah. it's going to be very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Another thing Coach is saying that he won't say that I'll say is, we're bored, Jaguars. We're bored. <laughs> we need something exciting to watch, okay? We're tired of all these blackouts. We need to get excited here in Jacksonville. I mean, you already got a color teal. Who wears teal on a regular basis? You guys get excited. Bring some swagger. And let's make some good picks. Okay, so they have 12 picks. So what kind of positions do you see them going for in those later rounds? Are they going to go get a running back maybe if they decide to let Leonard go? Were they sure if the, the offensive line, has, it needs Jesus and some help? Here, here's where it's all, I think a lot of it's going to be based off of who they get in that first pick. Okay. If they get a defensive line, they can balance it on the other side with their, their second pick. Okay. Offense, or vice versa. Second round. I think you go with the best player available. It hurts on the board you take him. If, if give you example, the um, I like the kid Jacob Eason, the quarterback out of Washington. You got, that gives you your younger guy. He doesn't have swagger, Terry. We oh, need but, swagger. But here's the thing: if you go back and you watch <laughs> that kid play, he can play. It's not going. It, it's only people only care when you win. When you start winning, then all the stuff. And the thing about Mitch, you got a lot of people here with his swagger because the way he played. You know, the way he keep the thing, the, that keeps the play alive in the pocket. He gives you that that swagger when you watch his him play. Mustache the problem with what's swagger. going on with him when the defense was giving up 200 yards a game rushing and he wasn't <laughs> able to get on the field. Right, okay. So you share that defense up, and I believe that's the hope. If you share the defenses up and allow him to get on the field and get that Minshew magic out there, then, you know, you're going to have that excitement that people are looking for. But the way to do it is if you're going to go by that blueprint, you shore up that defense, get the best available athletes possible because there's a ton of them out there. My thing is I really think they need help at the safety spot. They did, they're did. they decent at the linebacker spot. You fix the secondary, which is at the safety spot, and you fix you fix that defensive front. You're back to getting the normal. You're, you're back to playing good defense, and I think you'll be able to score points because he's shown that he can put the ball in the end zone. Yep. I think if you get rid of Fournette, that's to bring in more picks, to bring in more draft picks because you can replace him with a plethora of guys that are in this draft that can come in and start. Yeah. Well, so we know, I got to ask you this question, Coach, because we know mm -hmm. Terry is Team Jaguars, and I love it, but there are some fans watching that are flat out pissed off, okay? We have let go of Calais Campbell. Jalen Ramsey's gone, Darquez Denard, Marcel Darius, Marquise Lee. I mean, you can kind of, you know, know if you like them or not. Yannick may be gone, Leonard may be gone, and we let go of Nick Foles. And they're not that mad about that pick, uh, you know, that, that trade, other than the fact that you paid them all that money. So in, let's have a real conversation. Mm -hmm. What does this team need to do this year to get these fans on board because we live in Jacksonville, okay? I can either go to the beach, all right? If the Jags are winning, I'm just going to go to the beach. Uh -huh. Or I'll watch the Bucks, who now have Tom Brady. Or I'll tune in to see what Miami's doing. What does this team need to do? Well, I'm going to tell you what they have to do. Do what they can do <laughs> and get the number one pick next year in Trevor Lawrence. Okay. That's been that's, that's been that's been a word right there tanking for tanking for Trevor. Did you guys just <laughs> hear what Coach Wiley said? Well, the, the, the also if you listen before halfway through that losing streak, it was tanking for Tua. <laughs> you know, so there's nothing that's not possible okay. with two picks and a whole bunch of fourth. You can move up to that third, which is not out of fulfillable to move to to the, get the number three spot to get Tua. You know, you can you can move up to get him, especially if you get 
and Gakwe traded for that spot. Okay. You can move up, but it all depends on what they feel that they got in that building. We think we know, but we don't know. <laughs> and and I, I'm all for the excitement of getting somebody that's going to get me out of my seat a little bit. Yeah. But at the end of the day, when it kicks off in September, we hope, I want I want to feel confident that we can at least be able to win games, and I ain't got to let Lord here we go again. Well, <laughs> well, here's what we do know: we know they can no longer blame it on Tom Coughlin, and we do know that if they did tank the season or just not play good enough, that Trevor Lawrence would really bring some swagger. Well, you you mentioned it. You said swagger. Yeah. And he has a ton of it. Yeah. And you know, I I think uh, it's obvious they they're. they're uh, they're just starting over, you know, with, with, with all these draft picks. All these guys, they was traded, first of all. And all these guys, they're going to bring in 12. You said 12 picks? 12. That's, that's a whole and side of the ball. And they could trade away half of them if they wanted to, really, to move up. honestly. Right, so they have a lot of flexibility. But obviously, they're just really going with youth. Yeah. And they're just trying to see uh, um, what route they need to, need to go. Because, again, um, Obviously, winning is not priority right now with with these all these new guys. Yeah. I mean, so I won't say it's not priority, but they're just they're just start, trying to get a foundation. And I think uh, next year, next sure. draft. <laughs> long. So he's calling it. So we'll bring him so back long. next year to see if his prediction <laughs> is correct. Now we're getting ready to wrap up the show here, but. You know, one thing that I love about the draft is once it's over, because you can't go right into rookie camp, you can't really get ready for OTAs, not yet, we're going to see, in my opinion, free agency begin to fire back up because there are still some guys out there who are worth playing this year. Who I want you guys to kind of think about, you know, who's out there. You've got Jason Peters, who can still play left tackle. You've got Cam. You've got Jameis. You've got Jadavian Clowney. You've got Prince of Mukamura. You've got Devontae. You've got Ron Leary. There's a ton of guys out there. But who are you particularly shocked that hasn't been picked up yet? And where do you think they may go after, after Saturday is done and over and everything opens back up on Sunday? This is where I was talking about where if Ngakwe goes and you get a pick that you want, this is where you can go and get an Efferson Griffin from okay. Minnesota okay. who can play that spot because you have a guy on the roster who can play right in for you Okay. that that can also play the run. And that was the, the knock on Ngakwe is he's a great pass rusher. He can get the ball out, but he's also a liability against the run. I've heard him talking about if you look at the two Derrick Henry runs, it's because he didn't set the edge. And it was right on his side. Both of those runs the last two years and all those other linebackers getting looked like idiots because Derrick has got all this head of speed. And we know that from playing against it. You let that kid get ahead of speed. It, it, I don't care. Ain't too many human beings on this planet can bring him down by bring himself. Him down. Gotcha. So, and you, can't, you got to get, get him where he stops his feet. And that was one of the knocks on him. He's not that great against the run. I've actually seen him where they had Calais Campbell going on that side to make sure that they shored up the run on that side, depending on the tackle that they were going against that game. Do you agree? Or who else do you feel in free agency could we see start making some headways after this draft is over on Saturday night? Well, I, I don't think the Jaguars are looking to bring in many free agents. Okay. I, I think they're going to focus on the draft. Okay. I think they're going to take their time and do their due diligence on the draft, bring in quality guys uh, to, to help them long term. And they're just going to see what happens from there. Gotcha. I don't Because obviously um, they sent them all away. Yeah. Uh, so they're just want to. I think they just want to start over fresh and young. So I don't think too. If we get a free agent, it's going to be very, you know, strategic. They're going to make it. You know, it's, it won't be just an off the wall guy. They'll bring in someone they need to fit for to make the team, you know, serviceable. It won't just be random and just picking guys off the free agency market. They're going to just stick to the drag. With 12 picks is, a, like I said, a whole side of a ball. Yeah. That's a lot of picks. Yeah. It's a whole side of, uh, of a ball, and it can also, they've got leverage here. Just like the Dolphins, they've got, Dolphins got 14. They can do anything with those picks. But it'll be interesting to see what happens with the free agents that are out there. Some of them are older. Some of them, 
you know, can be considered to be on the end of their career. But in my opinion, a lot of them can still play ball. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with those guys. It has been fun. <laughs> Have you guys enjoyed yourself? My pleasure. Awesome. I know we can keep talking about football over and over again, but y'all got to get to that food. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again to our sponsor, Alvin Brooks, with My Season Chicken and Grips. We had a great time. You guys, don't forget, head on over to my Facebook page, the Tara Bunch, that's Bunch with an E, because you want to enter into this contest. We're giving a gift card, money. Everybody needs money right now. And you can also taste what this food is like for yourself by getting a free meal from My Season Chicken and Ribs. So make sure you head on over to find out what the rules are so that you can be considered once this is all said and done. Don't forget, we do have a post-draft show here on Saturday, same place but different time, 5 o'clock. Nigel Eldridge, former uh, NFL linebacker, as well as Cleo Lemon. You guys know him from here in Jacksonville when he spent some time on that roster. Former NFL and CFL quarterback are going to join us to talk about what the Jags actually did. So that should be interesting with that conversation. Thank you to my producers, Stefan Petty, Mr. Allen. Thank you to the best momager in the world, Melinda Henry, who makes sure that I have the best cast supporting me and my stylist Barbara J in Atlanta. You guys have a good evening. Don't forget to follow us on social media 904 Live Network and my Instagram and Twitter page at Bunch of Legs. That's L-E-G-Z-Z. -Z. You guys have a great night. Thank you again to my guests and we'll see you guys here on Saturday at 5 o'clock. Have a great night. And our product, we get it to a mass amount of people. It's a done deal. We believe that we're number one. And if we're not number one, we'll settle for number two. But number one better not twist his ankle because if number one twists his ankle, we're coming in the game and we're not coming out. Simple as that. We're going to press to be number one and we're going to push whoever's number one to the limit. So when it comes to catering, hey, we put that food on the table. We get it to a large amount of people. When they bite into our tender ribs, when they bite into our pulled pork, when they bite into that juicy chicken, hey, it's a done deal. Quality barbecue is our business, and that's what we do.